Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about protein structures, but before that let me explain about your uh, midterm exam a little bit. And I would say on Wednesday I will go through the questions related to midterm exam. As I say, it's not possible to provide solution key for a personalized exam. It contains so many questions with many calculations. And that's why uh, the only thing I can do to show you how I grade such papers, it could be very useful for the final exam. It's totally natural if you lose some points here and there because of very uh, minor mistakes like for example not providing formulas for some parts because I know you guys know about the topics very well now and you uh, you are comfortable with bioinformatics so far which is good news for me and so far I graded about 10 papers or 12 papers if I'm not mistaken and uh, it was very satisfying. I'm happy with your performance and hopefully for the final uh, after you understand about your errors then you will get even better mark for the final exam because uh, this is true that topics are related in bioinformatics but we can't say that it's getting harder. This is not the case and I'm sure that uh, you can handle it very good for the final and please watch the video or attend the class for Wednesday so that you know how such papers will be graded. Uh, I'm trying to finish grading your paper soon, maybe in the next days. And uh, I want to also finish grading my other courses for, for their midterm exams. So if you be patient, I would appreciate that. I will announce the date so that from that time, if you have any comments about the feedback related to uh, your midterm exam, you can let me know. Uh, because we have time until final exam. If uh, there is a problem with your feedback, then I can fix it. So there is no rush. We can do it on time. So for sure, I will announce the date so that from that time, you can comment about my feedback. And until that time, please avoid uh, sending me emails and talking about it because uh, I want to finish grading for everybody first. So that uh, because everyone are waiting, you know the feeling. So everyone are waiting for their uh, papers to be graded first. And then we will have about one month time to talk about it. Okay, guys, let's go through uh, our new lecture, Protein Structures. Today I'm going to talk about biological context that we need for next session. On next Monday, we will talk about the bioinformatics part of it. But today is mostly related to molecular biology. Uh, let me remind you about proteins. That uh, first, uh, from gene to mRNA, we had transcription. We had sequence of DNA. And each triplet of these mRNA, we call them codon. And you know each triplet uh, can be translated into amino acid. So first we had this DNA, then we transcribe uh, it to mRNA, then we translated it to protein. And as you see here, for example, usually uh, we have, not usually, always we have uh, four nucleotides, A, C, G, T, and for mRNA instead of T, we have uh, U. That's the only difference between these two in terms of bioinformatics, in terms of biology and chemistry, that's a different story. And for protein, we have these sequence of amino acids and their arrangement is very important for their function, their structure, and everything. But what we already know about these sequences are primary structure. It's like we know about the series of amino acids, the arrangement, and that's it. This one doesn't give us any information about the 
shape of the protein? What's the 3D structure of that? And that's why we have different structures of uh, proteins that we will talk about. So let me remind you about these three codons that uh, each codon can correspond to a specific amino acid. And we usually show them just by using one letter inside our sequences. But in uh, molecular biology, time to time, you can see that they use three letters instead of one to represent amino acid. Uh, we already talked about this uh, database before in one of our lectures that uh, this database is very useful in order to get information about the structure of proteins especially. So if you uh, just name your protein here, uh, then you can search for it and uh, get information about the structure, about the sequence, and so on. So this is a sample that what you can get from this database, like the 3D structure of a specific protein. So I already mentioned about the primary structure that the sequence that we know related to protein, that we show them, represent them like sequences like for DNA, this one we call primary structure. We call it also polypeptide chain, the way that we show it like this. But what is the secondary structure? So local substructures on the actual polypeptide back bone chain. When we talk about backbone, we are talking about the primary structure again. So when you hear about this expression, it's related to that. It means that inside your sequences, then you can find some regions, and each one of these regions can be considered as segments. And for these segments, we can categorize them into two categories, alpha helix and beta strand. And the combination of these two also makes a new structure, which we call secondary structure. This is useful because in order to predict what's the function of the protein, uh, we can see the arrangement of these two and guess what can happen. But the more detailed one could be considered as tertiary structure or 3D structure. So with this, we can, uh, even in, the, in some websites, you can even rotate the protein to see what's going on from each angle. And uh, this is very important because uh, the structure of protein can highly depend on the function of the protein and vice versa. And the most completed one we can mention about these structures is quaternary structure. And in this one, we are talking about the combination of subunits of proteins. And together, if we consider all of them together, then they are responsible for a specific functional unit. For example, hemoglobin. When we talk about hemoglobin, it contains subunits of proteins. And that's why we have uh, some 3D structures coming together and at the end having such a structure. So how to measure these protein structures? Because in bioinformatics, at the end, we are interested to compare these structures together or find similarities like what we have done with uh, alignment. So we can define such things also for protein structures. And we, talk, we will talk about it uh, next week in details for sure. But we should have some basic measurements for that. One of them is bond length. The other one is bond angles. And the last one is torsion angles. Let me show them on examples for you. Like. This one, for example, R and C, we say they are binding together, and this is the bond length. 
here in this picture you don't see for example what's exactly the length of that or how strong is the binding but these are the measurements that we can consider for the bond length and the other one is related to the angle between these bindings you see each one of them have uh, degrees and you can also measure them easily but what's the last one assume that we have such structure such bonds and here we have also for this part we can consider each part as a page and when you uh, compare these two pages together because we are talking about 3d structure in the 3d structure then we have pages and pages can have specific angles degrees between them so in that scenario we can also define uh, angles like here you see phi and psi as you can see here between the pages and those angles we call them torsion angles and as you can see by the way chemistry uh, could be a background related to protein structures uh, we don't go through that much details related to chemistry but of course if you know about them it's a big advantage if you want you can go through uh, your lectures related to chemistry to be a stronger related to that but in bioinformatics anyway we try to avoid that much details related to background sciences that we need but of course as I said it's a big advantage uh, I think uh, the lecture that we had today is good enough uh, to know about the biological background for our next lecture related to bioinformatics but if you want to know more about protein structures I suggest you guys to go through chapter 11 of the textbook this is extra reading not compulsory but it's good and also that database that I mentioned PDB you can also go through that and search for different protein structures and if you have any questions you can ask me that I don't understand for example what does uh, this part mean but anyway we will practice together uh, next week we will talk about the bioinformatics part of this biological context so okay guys if you have any questions you can let me know otherwise I will see you guys on Wednesday we will talk about midterm on Wednesday and as I said, let's uh, please avoid giving uh, comments related to feedback for the time being. Let me finish all the gradings, then we can talk about it for sure.